Before I go on about life in the bubble, I just want to say that we want justice for Breonna Taylor. Her situation is bigger than basketball. It's bigger than the bubble. And those people should be held accountable. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another great episode of Jump Off the Porch, man. It's your host, the one and only guy, Ruck Double Live. I'm coming to y'all live, man. This time, we coming a little different, man. We coming a little different. We over the airways and uploading our technology to really bring y'all the best we can. So without further ado, I want to bring in my next guest, man. This is a good brother of mine. You know, I've known this guy for a long time. And... He down in Orlando right now, man, in the playoffs. So without further ado, I want to welcome in my guy, Jerome Robinson. You on? My guy. Yes, sir. What's up, baby? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Just, you know, getting used to everything. How's life been for you? It's, it's different for everybody and for me as well, man. Yeah, I can tell, man. You you in the bubble right now. <laughs> Real life bubble. You're getting a bubble treatment. How's it how's it like down there in Orlando? It's cool, man. I mean, it's it's just so new. Um and it, you know, a little tedious process, but it's it's cool, man. I'm just happy to get back playing basketball. Um, you know, I feel like I'm on an AAU trip, you know, with the boys. It's, and it's gonna be a long thing, so gotta get comfortable, you know? Many things to get adjusted to. What's what's some of the biggest things that's like you're not used to or something that's totally different from a from a just uh ordinary AAU trip. I mean, you know, you know with AAU, um, you know, being able to get outside, being able to move around how you want to. I mean, for us, we leave anywhere across across these lines, it's it's automatic ten day quarantine, you know? So yeah. I mean it's you really don't have much to move around, you know what I mean, right now. Um, since it's all kind of new, we all got in. Um, I don't even think all the teams have done their their quarantine as far as like when, when you first fly in, you got to do a 36 to 48 hour quarantine. You know, you go through a, a test and you're in your room. You know, they drop off food at your front door and you're there, you know. Mm. Talk about the food, man. I, I done heard some bad things about that quarantine food. What's it been like? It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's had its good days and its bad days. We'll, we'll put it that way. <laughs> For sure, but yeah, the first I mean, first day wasn't too good, huh? Nah, first day wasn't too hot. Won't too what hot. they, they serve y'all the first day? First day, I got some some crunchy chicken wings, some salmon. They bring a big spread, so you kind of get to pick and choose, you know, what you want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes you got to make it work. You know, I need some hot sauce, some salt, pepper. I'm good. <laughs> they gotta have a hot sauce. Gotta have a hot Man, so you in year number two now, huh? Year two, bro. Talk about talk about the first year though, man. A lot of people don't really know because you was really behind the scenes, but you was you was on a great LA team for your first year getting drafted, being a lottery pick. You coming right in to playing with two of the best wings in the game. Yeah. Talk about talk about that experience and just all that you learned from that. Yeah, I mean it was it was super dope. Just um, you know, coming in, I got Lou, I had Avery Bradley, I had Pat Bev. Mm -hmm. uh, all in my first year and um I mean it was tough it was tough for me because you you're going in a situation where you got a guy like Lou who's a vet scorer and a guy like Avery Bradley who's and Pat Bev who are vet lockup defenders you know what I mean so you got the best of, of, of both worlds you know so right. you got to kind of go in and learn the game learn the the different coverages and things like that and, and learn how to score at that level you know so I, I think for me it was a great learning opportunity for my first year. You know what I mean? Just being on a team with a bunch of dogs that love to play the game, that want to play hard, and that want to win, you know? So every day going in and having to guard Lou, you know, or getting harassed by Pat and Avery every day, you know, it, it can do nothing but make me better. And right. as a competitor, that's all I wanted, you know what I mean? Getting to go against those dudes, it was it was great. At least the weight wasn't all on you. You had your boy Shy with you, too. Yeah, for sure. I was kind of splitting the, splitting the team duties as rookies. Yeah, man. Talk yeah. about talk about some of the duties you had to you had to take on as a rookie. Yeah. So uh so me and Shay, we um I'll start with like what? Oh yeah, so just our first trip, you know, going to training camp, you know, um 
you got a snack bag, which is basically like a suitcase full of snacks, bro. Candy, chips, um, uh, what? Condiments like salt and pepper, hot sauce, mm-hmm. things like that. All the cards, uh, any, anything they want, anything the vets want. That go speaker, chargers, headphones for That's extra. All that, huh? Everything. And, it, and it's with you, you know what I'm saying? And I don't care if they're going to call you at 3 in the morning. 7 a.m. You got to give them what they need, man. That's what's up. That's crazy. That's what's up, though. That's what's up. That's that's me. That's how I go, y'all. Y'all got to get the bond going. They got to get to know y'all. At the same you time. Do, bro. Everybody, everybody does it. You know what I mean? There's no yeah. fight. Ain't no fight. You got to earn your respect. So after right. the first year, y'all had a great run, and y'all first year not even having the pieces that y'all got now, yeah. and then go on to the next year. How much did you know about the about the Kawhi and the Paul George trade? Yeah, um, just kind of backing up off that, um, like, just ending that first year. I mean, in my first year, we played Golden State, bro, like, 10 to 11 times. You know what I mean? You're talking about the best team maybe possibly in history, you know what I mean, as far as a collective team. Um, so that experience alone and playing them in the playoffs was was ridiculous. I remember game one, them in there warming up or whatever. And then they come out of the tunnel, bro. The flames come flying up. And me, I remember me and Shay looked at each other, bro. We're like, oh, well, we're here now, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? So that was cool. And then going into the next year, we was just kind of like, you didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I remember being in Vegas. And me and PG actually got the same agent. And so I seen my agent that night uh, right before it happened. And I was like, we were just talking or whatever. And he was like, or what I told him was, I think I think we're gonna know about Kawhi probably like next week or something. You know what I mean? And he was he was kind of quiet, and then we talked a little bit about it, but nothing in the detail. Right. And then all of a sudden, bro, I'd seen boom, Paul George is coming to the Clippers. I was like in a trade. Hold on, first off, in a trade, right? Yeah. So the first thing I'm thinking is like, you go. Did I get traded? You know what I mean? So, bro, as I'm trying to refresh Twitter, whatever, people are calling me left and right. So I'm like, bro, I got traded, bro. Like, I don't even know what, who got traded what. It said two players, so I'm trying to figure it out. Right. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, bro. I'm on the phone with my parents. I'm like, yo, what's going on, bro? What's going on? Couldn't believe it, bro. And then that happened. And then and then uh, Kawhi came. I was like, bro, this is this is wild, man. Couldn't believe it. I'm talking like night and day, bro. Right. And then it's like hey, the, the price went up on the team. We'll put it oh, that yeah. way. <laughs> oh yeah, price went all the way up. All the way up. Y'all was expected to do everything this this past year. So it was a whole new level, bro. Yeah, that was crazy. Just and then even more, LA got even more hot when LeBron went to went to LA. Well, he not went to LA, but he stacked his team to get his team right. Yeah, so bro. just Talk about even even the first game because I know y'all played them first. Mm-hmm. So it was like, what was what was the atmosphere like in that first game playing against them? Bro, it was it was crazy, man. That that first game, like you're just like we're really playing these dudes first. Like this is this is gonna be nuts. Like I couldn't believe it. And just seeing how Kawhi came out, bro, was like this dude is unbelievable. You know what I mean? You're like, yo, like he. He played, like, totally different, I feel like, than, like, practice, things like that. Like, it almost felt like he was he was the Terminator. Like, he just turned something on, bro. And he, looked, on. he looked different. Like, yeah. that man looked different. You know what I mean? That's crazy. So, talk about, even – even so, you said, like, he wasn't the same in practice. How would he be in practice? Practice <clears> – <throat> so, I'll give you, like, a like a little regimen. It was, like, he come in, bro, and all the younger guys normally get there early. You know, got to get their individual work in. And he'd be in there too, you know, but he, his individual work wouldn't be as, as hard as ours. It, it would be more of a, you know, how he's getting spot shots or every shot he would shoot, he had somebody contesting it the whole time. You know what I mean? Like right by his hands, everything. Like, and it's funny, he only had one dude, got one one guy doing it. One guy, he he, he said, I'll never forget. He was like, uh, hey, Con, I, I like the way you contest my shot. We're going to do that the rest of the year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's what he basically told him, bro. So he jumped every time, bro, to contest his shot. Nah, he could do it for like 30, 40 minutes, come into practice. He still went hard in practice, don't get me wrong. Especially yeah. if, if if you – like for me, I had to guard him every day. You know, I'm guarding him or PG or Lou every every day, you know. So if you get a stop or two or you start talking, he's going to try to go get him a bucket, you know what I mean? Or or if he had like a bad practice, his next practice, he's going to turn up. You know what I mean? He's going to turn up for sure. 
He definitely, he definitely the type to keep notes and stuff. He like everybody calls him like cyborg. So I can see like if he has one thing that he likes, he yeah. probably wants that every. I can see him like eating the same meal every before every game, doing the same regimen before every game type of guy. Sure, he, he he's very. He's very strategic, you know, as far as body maintenance, you know, health, um, every basketball, you know what I mean? Off the court, like all his stuff is very strategic. He's got a he's got a schedule, he's got a plan, like it's it's pretty dope, bro. Yeah. So that's what's up. I know you got a lot of stories from just them two. Give me give me probably like your best story just from either being under Paul George or being under Kawhi, just something, you know. Yeah, so uh, for why, um, I would say his first time going live in training camp, right? I didn't know he was – I didn't know we were going against – like, I thought he was still sitting out, you know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, we're like, all right, we're going live. Boom, I'm looking for my matchup. Look to the right. Kawhi's in the spot where I'm supposed to be guarding. So I'm like, all right, bet. I guess he's playing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, boom, they run into play. He came off, or they hit him. I'm on him. Screen come, boom, blow up the screen. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I'm here. He started driving. I'm here. Yeah. Bro, he goes up for a lay. I jump too, like this. Bro, he somehow, some way, I've never seen somebody like, I, I'm, bro. I'm telling you right now, bro. I'm like, this is great defense. Like nothing, <laughs> nothing you can do. Hands up, both hands up, bro. He just takes the ball and like whips it around my arms and just lays it up. So like, like perfect. Like if I wasn't even there, and as we're yo, as we're riding back down the floor, he's running next to me. He's like, it's like riding a bike. And then he does the laugh, bro. That everybody, it's his <laughs> laugh, bro. So I just, I just start giggling, bro. I'm like, there's nothing I, I couldn't guard it no better, you know. What I mean? <laughs> you know, bro. And I just, I just laugh, bro. I was like, wow. Yo, I said, I said this man's different. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. And then P, now, man. PG was dope, man. I, I had a great time with PG because <clears throat> at the time I wasn't playing much when he was coming back. Mm. And so every day for about like three weeks, maybe I'll, I'll say about three weeks, we played one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three every day, pretty much, bro, every day. So being able to guard him every day, him guarding me every day, I thought that made me so much better in that three weeks, bro. It was super dope. And then we got a real cool bond, you know what I mean? And then – um me and him having the same agent and stuff. It was cool. So P's my guy. I mean, they're both my guys for sure. He's more more of a personal guy. You can kick it with type. Like, yeah, I've, I've been around P a little more on the personal side than I have been with Y. Mm -hmm. But they're both great dudes off the court. Like, it's, it would be like if you wanted to talk to him, bro, or if I wanted to call him now, they're going to talk to me as long as I need to talk to him for, you know what I'm saying? Good dudes, great OGs for sure. That's what's up. That's what's up. Before moving on. We're going to backtrack a little bit to tell the, really let people know who you are because, you know, a lot of people didn't really get to see you much on the NBA floor. So we we know this guy. I don't know if y'all know or not, but this guy was a uh, first-round lottery pick, you know what I'm saying, 13th pick, and coming from Boston College being ACC's top scorer and uh, in his last year there, his sophomore year there, really. You ain't going to say last year because he didn't even do all four years. Averaging 18 points, four, four rebounds, four assists, uh, leading the ACC in points, all ACC. You know, talk about talk about Boston College and really just how they molded you or or gave you that that killer mentality going in. Yeah, um, I would say as far as like the killer mentality, <clears throat> the coach that recruited me there was Scott Spinelli, mm -hmm. and you know all the time he, he's a crazy Italian dude, um, which my mom loved. My mom's dad's Italian, and um, off the chain every day. I'm talking like coming in the gym, da, 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 da. you know, it's hilarious. But every day you'd be like, yo, there's a plate out there. It's either you going to eat or they going to eat. You got to make that choice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you know, he, he talked to me every day like, yo, it's it's rough out here. You don't want to work a regular job. Like, you know what I mean? Like every day, right. every day, bro. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for him for sure. Um, and, and the rest of my coaches as well. Without them, I wouldn't be here either. Um, but you know, every day was just a, a building block to get better, to get better, to become more consistent, you know, build my game, be a better person. Like, they were just really on top of me about getting better in all aspects, for sure. That's tough. I like, I like the fact that they, they had no holes on you, bro. They let you, they let you do your thing, and they really show what, what kind of player you are. For and sure. I really, I really enjoy watching you at Boston College. Definitely, I was 
I was definitely excited to see you turn up. So going into that, knowing, did you know you were going to be a lottery? I didn't know right away. Mm -hmm. I, I knew I had a really big range going into the, going into the draft. Um, <clears throat> like my agent was like, or <clears throat> the workout guy I had was like, Hey, you can, you can be in this lottery or, you know, people can see you in the forties and fifties. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, Hey, I want to be up at the top. You know what I mean? So I had a little injury going into pre-draft, but most of the guys I was compared to, like, I, 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 I held my own or I cooked, you know what I'm saying, for the year. Definitely. So just going, going into my workouts, it was nothing but kill or be killed. That, that's how it is in those workouts, bro. It's, I, I was seeing the same dudes going through the workouts for the most part um, because those teams kind of will see how you match up with guys, you know what I mean? They compare you to other guys, so they bring you guys in together and see how it goes, you know? So I felt like I killed and – pretty much all my workouts, man. And you gotta be humble, let them know. You was cooking them. You feel yeah. Me? Was, yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, you know, but just showing out, bro. You know, just but for me it was just it was no different. You know what I mean? I just went and played my game and it right. showed, you know? That's what's up. That's what's up. So talk about even not more so going into the league being under the guys you were under, what was the, what was the biggest adjustment? Because I know probably one of them is, is playing time, you know, but talk about a big adjustment you had to, you had to um, overcome or go through the, you know what I'm saying, in that first year or first couple of years in the league. Yeah. Um, I would say going from college, our style was more of a little more free flowing. And obviously I was a more of a focal point of the team. Right. Then now you're going to be a more of a role guy to where it, this is your role, my man. Like you, you don't go outside of this often, you know what I mean? Unless, unless you showing out, you know what I mean? So it was really knowing your role and, and perfecting it. Cause at times that's, that's the only way you're going to get on the court. Like they're, they're not going to let me go out there and shoot the will shots. No, yeah. sir. I'm getting out of the game, you know? So I got to go in there and be Jerome Robinson, come down here, lock up, make some spot up threes. And that's going to keep me on the floor, you know? So kind of understanding your role and perfecting it for what it is. And then, growing it once you get that trust you know so once you get that trust and what you do and you're on the court consistently you can kind of show more and more as you go you know that's what's up. That's what's up. And you definitely gaining that trust in washington hitting that big shot to really yeah. take the league and and win that game talk about that feeling how you just how you just what 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 was going through your head in that moment i know it was shoot but you know how was that feeling it was it was huge and it's and it's funny because I was out there to get a defensive stop and they came and did a slip screen. So I'm thinking I was supposed to switch, bro. He just blew right by me, got a lay. They took the lead. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. And we come down and uh they literally triple team Brad and Brad's looking at me and I got wide open eyes. I'm like, come on, bro, please. <laughs> And then, hey, because I had to look at the cloud, I'm like, bro, there's about nine, eight seconds left. I said, you ain't getting this chicken back, unfortunately. I'm going to let you know that now. <laughs> because, look, bro, they triple team you. So, as soon as I caught, I said, got to let it go. I let it, I let it, and it go. worked out. It's crazy because I, I was watching that game, and they said um, last – it was like a game before that. Y'all was in a similar predicament, and Bradley gave it to uh, somebody else, and they missed it. So, it was yeah. just probably a relief for him to get that pass off to somebody who, who would hit it that time and really made him feel – made him gain trust in you as a, as a player. And after that, I bet it was, it, was, it was a great feeling going into that locker room, just knowing you had to trust on the team. Yeah, man. It, it, was, it, was, it was definitely – I would say leaving the Clippers and going to Wizards, it, I was in a different position, you know. So I was kind of used to the role that I was for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and then going with the Wizards, it was more like, hey, Rome, like, get back to BC, kind of. You know what I mean? Obviously, we had Brad, but it was like, hey, man, you can dribble that ball as many as you kind of need to. Coach won't, you know, right. that's how it was, you know? So, um, yeah. Everybody, was, everybody in Carolina was saying that, too. Like, once you once you switched up and went to the Wizards, oh, we was like, yeah, he about to, he about to get in that bag now. For sure. He about to get in that bag now. Just getting, I mean, Coach, you know, just telling me to go get it, man. Don't. Don't he, he he based on me, man. I'm not gonna hold you back from nothing, man. We want to see you show up. So what's up? That's what's up. He's taking you all the way back to the to the Boston College days, even the even the Raleigh brought in capital days. Talk about uh growing up in North Carolina, you know, like what was it like for you growing up? 
Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, I, I feel like – well, I, I played multiple sports growing up, as you know. Um, played baseball in high school and basketball in high school. I was too skinny for football. I'm going to put that out there now. They did ask me to play receiver, but I'm like, bro, I don't got time. Yeah, to I, I was <laughs> the same way. Yeah, it's just too heavy out here, man. I done got squished. I'm good. Right. Um, but growing up in Raleigh, man, it just felt like it was such a, a Hooper's place, man. Hooper's paradise almost, bro. Mm. Hooper's paradise. Talking about going to the Y every day, going up to state every day. You know, it was, it was all centered around basketball and sports for me. You know, I felt like growing up. I was outside every day, um, just just busy, just doing stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, and I got three little brothers, so running around with them, and then just I feel like just hoops. That's been that was about it for me and Riley. I felt like right. It's a lot. That's really for a lot of people. Like you said, it was a hoopers paradise, and yeah. just really and it blows my mind to this day the team we had, like. My senior year, me, Devontae, you, James, bro, we were so stacked. It was no reason we shouldn't have won championship, but, you know, we yeah. got second place, went to the championship, whatever. Sure. Just talk about, talk about if you knew you were going to be that guy coming in freshman year or, or you know, just how you felt being under, under us in a way or, like, what you've seen coming up and how you put it to your game. Yeah, so – um, your senior year. <clears throat> For me, I felt like freshman year was kind of a blur um, <clears throat> with Coach White. Um, we just kind of played like, you know, we were the worst JV team he had in like 10 years or something crazy like that. I was like, bro, we got like 10 freshmen. Like, what do you expect? Bro? Right, like, yeah. we, we can't help it. And next year we had the best record y'all had in 12 years. So, uh, you know, and then seeing you guys was, was super dope. Just watching you guys, watching DT, watching you, Chase, all y'all boys just hooping, free-flowing, playing. Um, but it's just – you know what's crazy to me, man? I feel like DT does not play any different, obviously besides him shooting from half court on most. Right. But plays no different, bro. They the same thing, bro. I'm like, bro, he's doing <laughs> the exact same thing, just better. Like, it's just yeah. – more fine so, tune, bro. He's just more on. He's just on a bigger stage, a bigger stage. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So just watching you guys, even like my sophomore year, I started on JV, and then you like a bunch of you guys got hurt, and I'll never forget um, Coach Farrell coming to get me out of honors geometry, and I I go outside. He's like, "Hey, uh, you're gonna you're gonna get moved up to varsity. You got you got practice with us." I'm like, "Or you're gonna get moved up to varsity?" I'm like, mm -hmm. "You got practice today." I'm like, "What?" All right, where this is crazy, you know what I mean? So I get the black and gold jersey. I'm like, okay, oh yeah, <laughs> go on practice, bro. Got no, no, no plays. I'm like, okay, whatever, right. bro. I'll never forget. We ran, I felt so like I was just like in such in shock that I was on varsity. That when coach made me shoot that free throw at the end of that practice, mm -hmm. we, and I airballed, I'll never forget yo. that. <laughs> I'll never forget it was that. Tight, yo. <laughs> But at the same time, we understood, like, man, like, he a, bro, he a nervous, bro. Yeah, like, it's not, hey, I made the next one. I'm good. I said I got it off me. I'm, I'm cool. And then, bro, it was crazy. Like, I had one practice, and then we played our rivals the next day, Millbrook. And then we played Wake Forest. And I, I remember I made my first shot ever, cornered three ball, needed it, and then went out and played Wake Forest, bro. And I hit, like, Four, four or five threes, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm here now. I said, yeah, I was at home. Everybody was waiting for that moment too. Turn. Turn. Everybody was waiting for that moment. That one, when that first one dropped, I was like, oh yeah, Rome, Rome was burning. That's what they say. Yeah, Rome was burning. <laughs> <laughs> Rome was hot, yo. Nah, that's what's up. And then it carried on to the to the league, man. You got that got that big shot. Talk about even even in the league now. You know, you being on the Wizards now. Coming from coming from Boston to even going to LA, that's a whole different culture shock. How did you feel leaving LA? Because I know nobody wants to leave LA. Yeah, bro. Talk about the trade. I mean, LA. I got my first taste of LA um, the summer before I went back from my junior year of college, and I was like, bro, this place is nuts, bro. Like, I just couldn't believe, like, not even like the party scene or nothing like that. It was like just the way of life, you know what I mean, as far as, like, bro, it, and I was there, my, my first time there, I was there for six weeks, did not rain one time, bro, did not rain one time, it was a perfect day, every day, I was like, okay, 
Like you hear me talk about LA, I was like, I see why people are so happy every day. You know what I mean? This is the best day every day. No humidity, none of that. Palm trees, you cooling. Got the beach. It, it was it was really dope. Um, definitely a culture shock. You know, you got to get used to the West Coast kind of style of things. Right. Um, but yeah, that was super dope. What's up, but I, I will say this though, going like I went to Boston, which is what twelve hours from home. Went to LA, which is a flight from home. Mm-hmm. And being back in DC, I've I've been able to drive home multiple times. Right. You know I mean, I mean, I got three younger brothers, bro. So the only time I could really see them was when they came up to see me, or when I got a small break, Christmas, summer, or you know what I mean, or when when I came from LA to come home, or if they came to LA, you know what I mean. It wasn't like they could drive or anything like that. It was so far away, but. Now that I've been close to home, I've seen my brothers more than I've ever seen them, you know what I mean, in the last five years, right. four years, you know what I mean? So, honestly, that I think that that is – obviously, my opportunity is what I'm most thankful for, but – no, I'm wrong. Being a close to my family is what I'm most thankful for, and my opportunity is just the, the next thing to it, for yeah. sure. Hey, I'm, I'm thankful for it, too, because, honestly, if you wasn't close to home, you would have never pulled up to my porch with you that day. Facts. Never got to got the brainstorming and even got yeah. to this point, man. So I yeah. want to thank the wizards and all y'all just <laughs> bringing my boy back home. Cause if it wasn't yeah. for y'all, hey, it probably w- wouldn't be here right now. So hey, shout out to y'all. Shout out to the wizards. I got high hopes for you going into this playoffs, man. What you what you expecting out of out of yourself in these playoffs? Yeah. Um... For me, man, it's it's a huge opportunity for me. Um, yeah, with Brad, no DB, um, but for our team in general, man, we'll, I think uh, it's gonna be great. You know, just being able to play fast. You know, we're gonna play together. Um, but for me, for me in general, we'll just be have fun and go play. You know what I mean? Just literally, like it, I'm, I'm not gonna treat it like pickup, but treated as the freest kind of basketball I could play, which is very similar to pick up. But you know you, you get what I'm saying. Like, you like AAU. You know saying? Yeah, exactly. It, it's gonna be like AAU for us. We out here trying to go get this national te- uh championship. The championship, same yeah, thing. You know, no different. No, no different. different. I'm in Orlando. It's the same thing, bro. It's yeah. Same thing. same thing back in back in the younger days, bro. That's crazy. Really? I even got the court set up. That was I seen that. That's dope. Like y'all got y'all home courts on right beside each other that's what's up that's dope. dope like today we were practicing on miami and, and indiana's court you know what i mean like it's, it's cool it's, it's crazy to see it set up like that yeah and everybody down here but it's it's, it's a dope setup though that's what's up that's what's up so even so y'all not gonna have fans nah. y'all not gonna have like it's gonna be very minimal people in there mm-hmm. how you think how you think you're gonna feel like you you think you're gonna you think it's gonna be weird or yeah, it, it'd first. definitely be weird just because it's going to be regulation rules. You know what I mean? That would be the only thing that's weird about it. You don't play under regulation rules unless there's fans there, pretty much. What you mean? What you mean by regulation rules? Like uh, a quarter. Like, you don't normally play a quarter. You know what I mean? Like, you uh-huh. scrimmage in practice or scrimmage against somebody for eight minutes, maybe ten minutes. You know what I mean? Right. Consistently, you know. This is going to be real timeouts, real refs, real – you know what I mean? It's yeah. it's a whole real-life game with no fans, which is the weird oh, Yeah, part. no no commercial timeouts and all yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah, I, that. that's the thing. I think there'll still be commercial timeouts and things, but, like – Y'all just be yeah, sitting. Like, right. Yeah, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just, uh, I get it. I get it. Hey. Y'all boys got to stay safe out there, man. man. I know they I know they putting bubble wrapping around everything, so – the mask. We got, safe. Got, we got these on. I don't know if you, you can see that. I got yeah, a I've ring. Seen that. What is that? This is an aura ring. So I don't got another page over there, but it's basically a um, it's a ring that it's got like these sensors on it. I don't know if you're gonna see it, but it's it's pretty cool. Okay. Wow. It has sensors on it, but yeah, it tracks like your sleep, your you know heart rate. It, it does like all that kind of like uh, Apple watches, but it's a ring right. form. And supposed to be able to detect COVID like three days before or something before you it you know maybe get on a test or something like that you know your body temperature things like that so it's it's pretty cool um, so I, I just decided to wear it I mean hey if it gets to that time where I if I hope I 
I don't get this thing. Right. Um, hopefully, you know, it can it can detect it before, you know, it gets bad. Do y'all got to play with it on? Nah, we don't got to play with it on. Um, same way we don't obviously got to play with mask on, but right. – as soon as we leave our room, mask got to be on unless you're eating or drinking um, or playing basketball and uh, got to have – or put the ring on. So, I say I heard y'all couldn't have, like, y'all family, y'all girls or nothing down there. Y'all just – Nothing, man. With Dolly, my room is empty, closed, food. No, dry. Dry. Damn. They're not going to let them come down at all, like, even if y'all – no, they will. So they'll let families come down after the first round of playoffs. But after that, they still got to go in quarantine. So you might not even see them until mid-second round. So, I mean, that's still another yeah, that's some time. six to eight weeks away. You know what I mean? So I can definitely see why it's tough for a lot of people, for mm -hmm. sure. Definitely. I've seen a lot of players, like, dropping out of it and just, like, not even wanting to deal with it. Which, yeah. which is reasonable. I mean, I understand that, too. 100%. And, and for me, to be honest, like, I was even nervous about it, just the fact that of COVID by itself. You know what I mean? Like, bro, it, it, that thing's real. You know? Real. It is and, real. And, and it ain't went away yet, you know? Yeah. It's so. weird, too, man. I just – I hope they get a, get a cure for it, man, so we can get back to the normal because life is just crazy right now, even though – like, I mean, I've heard a lot of times, you know, I was talking to Will about it, like, um, in my last interview, man, it's a it's a blessing, too, because I feel like a lot of people are are digging into their creativity, you know, and 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 found, finding out thing, a lot of things about themselves they didn't know. So, yeah. it's a blessing and a curse, but I definitely want everybody to stay safe. Like that. Definitely, and, and especially with the whole Black Lives Matter thing as well, man, I, I feel like I don't, I, like, obviously the sad, you know, with George Floyd, but that happening during a pandemic and everybody being at home, you were force fed. You you had to watch it. You had no choice. You know what I mean? I don't care who you are. You saw it, you know? So, and it's wrong. And this, this is unfortunately the perfect time for it to happen, man. It's, it's, it's not right. Um, it's not right. I seen you guys as a team went out there, like you, you, John Wall, Bradley Bill, and and really just y'all whole team was just out there marching and stuff. Talk about that experience. Yeah, that was that was super dope. Um, just having the team back together, that was cool. We even got with the Mystic as well, um, and just had a march, man. And, and what was really cool about it was even when we started, um, there there was a good amount of people there. But as we kept growing, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I turned around, bro. It was a lot of people, and I I was it, it threw me off because I hadn't looked back for a little while. Right. Now, I look back, and it looked like we added an extra 300 people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, we moving militant right now. I said, yo, this is dope, bro. Like, this, wow. like it was just so powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like, just seeing the Black Lives Matter on the on the street, like, you really felt it. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I had goose. Like, it, it was real, bro, for real. Especially with y'all being right there in Washington, D.C. Right there, bro. It was right like, there. It's, it's personal. It's right, it's right at your front door with it, literally. Like y'all paved, paved the road straight to the White House. So that was dope, man. That was dope. That was dope. Talk about uh, you with another Raleigh cat, John Wall. Talk about how that's been for you and just mm -hmm. connecting with him. Super, super dope. So I didn't even really know John that personally before. Um, like we, we've had our run-ins. Obviously, we both know it from Raleigh. Um, and, you know, mute, a lot of mutual friends, you know, like Corey and Jermaine and all them, you know, like, yeah, family. Family. yeah, yeah. you know, so many people cross lines and we know, we know, you know, but now actually knowing them on a personal level has been super cool. Um, it's funny just that when I got there, my locker's right next to him in the arena and practice facility. So, and then we sit next to each other. Like whenever I check out of the game, I sit next to him and we just talk about the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. John, John is a basketball fanatic, loves basketball literally just watch his sports like I went to go hang out with him one day and I was like you play video games right? no nah, bro I just watch hoops like it's hoops it's movies you know what I mean like yeah. like but he's a, he's a good dude man he's a good dude great family man yeah man, solid dude what's the biggest thing you probably took from him or learned from him besides him saying put him in the rim um <laughs> <laughs> I swear he's like Man, put him in the rim. Put him in the rim. 
Um, just, just I would say, like, the pace. Um, I got to guard him uh, a couple of times, you know, you know, the same way with, with uh, PG, with him coming back from his injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, his pace, you know, his, his ability to see the floor and things of that nature. So, for me, I, I you know, something happened in the game, I'll ask him right away. I mean, the dude's been in the league longer, and he's seen more than I have. He's older, you know. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, and – he will he will talk to you about it. He'll give you more suggestions. He'll talk about something else in hoops, you know what I mean, or, or different situations, you know. So it helps you. It elevates your IQ on a, on a new level. Yeah, and I definitely talk with a lot of guys about that, like pace being being the separation for a lot of guys, knowing yep. pace because growing up, you just know zero to 100. Like you're 100 miles an hour, go, 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 go. It's nothing about pace and time and place with everything. And yeah. with John Wall being literally zero to a hundred type of guy, like yeah. as fast as he wants to be, for him to learn that pace is 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 scary actually. Yeah, bro. So like yeah. just learning that from him, that's that's something that you can definitely take and, and definitely yeah. elevate your game with. So definitely I'm, I'm glad that's something you learned. Well, that's really all I got for you, man. Hey. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> guy Jerome Robinson, man, looking to do big things in the future, man. You already know. Stay tuned and watch. When y'all when y'all first game? 31st. 31st. 30. Who y'all playing? Y'all playing the – we take, I think we play Brooklyn, but don't take my word on that. Okay. Don't take my word on that. And whatever it is, 31st, tune in to see my boy, see him turn up. He really about to turn up these next couple of seasons, so I want y'all to stick really? around. And, man, just – Stay tuned for another great episode of Jump Out the Porch, man. You already know we want you to like, comment, subscribe, all of that, man, so we can keep this thing going. I want all my guys to make it so all my guys can tell how they jumped out. The- man, you ain't even tell how you jump off the porch, man. <laughs> Run it back real quick. Tell when was when was your moment, man? When did you, when did you know you was the chosen one? You know what I'm saying? When you, when 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 was you jump when off? When did I jump off the porch? Yeah. I say I, I say I jumped off the porch. I jumped off. I jumped off the porch my junior year. Junior my, year, high school, or college? I mean, not college. 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 Yeah, yeah. college. Okay. I jumped off the porch. As far as like, how I felt like, ah, oh, they can't mess with me. Type. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. you definitely during my junior back. year, I had a and it's crazy. I had a really rocky start in my junior year, and I'll never forget we played LaSalle at a at a um at a neutral site. And that was my first good game, like, literally my junior year. And after that, I never looked back. Jumped yeah. off the porch and kept it rolling. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, baby. And that's how we're going to finish it, man. I want to thank my boy Jerome Robinson for stopping <laughs> by on this virtual <laughs> chat. Hey, we got to do what we got to do, baby. In the bubble, man. Zoom. In the bubble. Right now. <laughs> hey, man, be safe out there, bro. Do your thing and return home safer, man. Much love. We'll see you when you get back. You too, brother. Yes, sir. We out. Weezy out of here. Weezy out of here. Weezy out of here. Jumped out of a way right into a daisy. Can't break your.